what are you doing? I was just getting my tape measure. Okay. My workshop isn't just a workshop. I don't know about you, but to me it is a place of therapy. Something that is just mine. A place where I can enjoy myself. Not that way. But usually I'm just here to do work. But I would actually enjoy just being here with my thoughts sometimes. And my thoughts go really well together with whiskey, apparently. So today I've set myself a goal of making a whiskey cabinet for my workshop. And whenever I have time for a whiskey and some thinking, I can come out here, have myself a glass and just enjoy the therapeutic place that is my workshop. What I didn't know before starting was that it was going to get really hard to make this cabinet the way I wanted it. Let's just say some mistakes were made. The first thing I did was measure a bottle of whiskey, and they do come in different sizes and shapes depending on how much liquid they contain, so I decided I would go for one of the bigger ones that I like. I also decided that the cabinet should be able to hold two glasses, and if you wonder why I have the ugliest whiskey glasses, I'll get to that later. That was also a mistake. But that way I can come out here with a friend or a guest and offer them a whiskey. That's basically it. A cabinet with storage for two glasses and a bottle of whiskey. And a small drawer for something completely unnecessary. The workshop to me is becoming more and more of a sanctuary. I keep buying new tools that I can use to make new stuff and the tools themselves aren't necessarily adding any value to me, but that the workshop is growing and getting better definitely does something for me. I just love being here. But I relate being here to making things, so whenever I'm here I feel the need to do something. And I want this to be even more than just tools. Man cave feels like an overused word. So this is what I'm imagining. I can come out here one evening when the kids are asleep, I pour myself a small whiskey, I might listen to music as well, and I just wander about and do some cleaning or I just sit here and plan future projects. Or just sit here and think about life. Anyway. Planning the cabinet out left me with this drawing, 400 by 270 millimeters and 150 millimeters wide. I want it to be accessible and somewhat dust protected, so not an open cabinet. If you want to download the drawing, I'll have a link in the description of the video. The first step of the build was to mill my material. I'm using ash for this. I started by cutting up the pieces I would need to the rough size with the miter saw. Then I went ahead and planed them down with the planer thicknesser. You see that trolls? I'm using the push blocks and not my hands. And then I faked checking for 90 degrees for camera. With this build I decided to give myself time to do everything slow and steady. So after milling everything I took a short break to clean up the mess I had already made. I guess this is a step of me trying to make the workshop time less stressful. Because normally I don't have a lot of time to make a project and record it at the same time. When I had two faces planed, I could cut it on the table saw to the final width before using the thicknesser. And here's my second troll mistake. Using gloves with the table saw. I know I shouldn't, but to be honest, I just forgot. And the reason I'm wearing the gloves is that it was minus 10 degrees Celsius. That's 15 degrees Fahrenheit. I have one of those combined planar thicknessers, so I need to convert. And it usually takes some time, but I think this machine has been serving me really good. It's the craft machine from Axe Minister. Oh, and this is not sponsored. The only thing is that it takes a bit of time switching between the two. And you have to crank the wheel to lift the table up for the thicknesser because it's in the way of the big yellow dust extraction port. For the box itself I'm going for mitered corners. To get those cut accurately I'm using my contractor table saw. I spend as much time as possible to get the angle of the blade correct and then I use a crosscut sled to cut the pieces. I make sure I have an accurate 45 degree miter and then I can go ahead and cut the rest. This process is usually one of the hardest because even though the measurement is correct every now and then I don't end up with perfect miters. So not only is it good to set it up correctly, 
It is also very important to run the pieces through the blade so that the teeth of the blade have time to do the cutting. If I push too hard, it will flex the blade every now and then, and I will end up with a cup in the miter. My table saw crosscut sled has seen some action and it looks awful, but it still works just fine. I'm not one of those woodworkers who makes fancy jigs. I'd rather spend the time I have making stuff than just making stuff for the workshop. Laying out my pieces and marking them is just to know what is up and front of the cabinet. I make sure the grain add up even though it won't matter because I'm kind of painting it. After all my mitered edges are cut I can go ahead and start working on the pieces that will go inside the cabinet as shelves and the wall to separate the glasses from the bottle. You can use the table saw for this as well but I don't want the dados going all the way through and that's why I'm using the router instead. Because the bit of the router is round I need to chisel out the rest when the cuts are done. And I should probably sharpen my chisels. That's one thing you can do whilst having a whiskey, right? Nah, no sharp tools while drinking. Once all my dados were cut correctly according to my drawing, it was time to glue up the cabinet. In order to glue up the miters, I'm using my new investment, the Festool Domino. This was the first time I used it on miters, but it worked perfectly. Then I could go ahead and add glue and just clamp everything up. Make sure it was perfectly square and then go on to make the shelf and the divider. The back of the cabinet will also have a small rebate where I can attach the backing board. And I forgot about that, so I was halfway through gluing up my cabinet when I realized that. So I had to take it all apart, remove the glue and then cut the rebate. For that I just used a table saw and a flat tooth blade. I attached a piece of wood to the fence to be able to get really close to the fence with the rebate. I've set the width to equal half the thickness of the cabinet walls, so 8mm. And then I just pass them through until all the material is removed. And I have myself a rebate on the back. Then I was ready to glue up the box once again. And when you're making things like this for the first time, it is really easy not to have all the steps in mind and mistakes happen. It wasn't a very bad one since I didn't damage the wood. And when the cabinet was in glue I could mill more material for the shelf and the divider that will go inside the already cut dados. Look at the shoes I'm wearing. Cold. Feet. And minus 10 degrees. Ugly though. The shoes. And since they go together they also need dados cut so I did that the same way as before with the router and a piece of scrap as a guide. I made sure they would fit in place and then I cut them to width on the table saw before I glued them in place. I did spend a lot of time thinking about the front and what I came up with in the end was this idea of a door that looks like a bottle of whiskey is trying to penetrate its way out. But what I didn't know then is that even though it sounds like a cool plan, it isn't that easy actually making it. To achieve that look I thought long and hard before I came up with an idea. I drew up a simple bottle in Fusion 360. Then in another software called Blender I used that same bottle to catch a falling cloth. It's pretty dope. And I thought I had come up with the perfect idea, but no matter how I tried to get it to look good, it didn't. In the software you can change all sorts of things to make the fabric fall differently, but nothing looked like I wanted it to look, so I just decided to give up. But then I realized that I was going about it way too complicated. Then I placed it onto a small piece of wood, made the edges come together, and there I had it. It wasn't as cool as the creases from the fabric landing on top of the bottle, but it was close. And it wouldn't take ages making it either. 
When I was pleased with the look, I exported that as an STL file, which is normally used for 3D printers, but this time I could use the 3D function in Easel. It's a software from Envenables that I use together with my CNC. I glued a small piece of wood on top of my door and then I could have the CNC cut away the bulk of the material to reveal the bottle. The carve is done in two steps. The first step removes most of the material and leaves a pretty rough surface, whilst the second step uses what is called a ball nose bit. The ball nose bit is rounded at the top and leaves a much smoother surface. After just two hours, I had a result. That's awesome! I wanted to make a small drawer to go in the bottom of the cabinet. I had all these pieces cut on the table saw and then I just smashed it together with glue and a plywood bottom. As easy as possible. Unfortunately, because I can be an idiot, I ruined the front when I was making a small handle to open it, so I accidentally drilled the hole on the bottom where I had a rebate for the drawer bottom. So I went with walnut instead because I had that milled to the correct size. After cutting all the pieces, I could go ahead and assemble the little drawer with glue. For hinges, I wanted to go with these hidden hinges called saws. They are really cool as they are hidden. The only issue is that they are a bit harder to install. So I gave up on the ones I ordered. Because I was closing in on finishing this project and I lose patience the closer to done I get with the project. I'm not sure if you're the same, but it happens to me all the time. So I went with the basic hinges instead. I chiseled out some pockets for them to sit in used a self-centering drill bit to pre-drill the holes and then attach the screws. Basic as possible. I added some magnets to hold the door as well since I want it to stay closed and the hinges I chose won't keep it closed. This build might seem unnecessary, but the reward I get from making something like this is immense. I mean, something like this will last a really long time, and even if I move and change the place I live to something else, I can always bring my whiskey cabinet and put it up in a new workshop, and that new workshop will feel like mine. The front needed some sanding, and since it's so irregular, I had to do it all by hand. It took me quite some time, but in the end I was really pleased with how it looked. For the finish I used Rubio Monocoat. First a layer of Pre-Color Easy Intense Black and then a layer of Charcoal Oil. And I do think it was a good choice. The cabinet looks so good in that color. You might wonder why I didn't leave the ash but I really want to try this finish out. You still see the grain and I think it looks awesome. And it fits my workshop. Then I could go ahead and attach the cabinet to the wall of the workshop. Add some whiskey and some whiskey glasses that I ordered by mistake. They have a bullet half penetrating them. I thought that was just a way to show how strong the glasses were when I ordered them. But turns out that they actually have a bullet in them. Who cares, as long as I can use them to drink whiskey right. In the small drawer I added some whiskey stones and why not a tape measure. Whiskey stones are basically a replacement for ice. You put them somewhere cold, like my workshop in the winter time, and then you can use them as eyes without watering the whiskey out. What are you doing? I uh, was just getting myself a whiskey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>